The Nandu, also known as the Ria, first came to northern Germany from South America in 2000. Now, it's made itself at home in the state of Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. It's an invader and a conqueror. Ria expert Frank Philip counts the birds twice a year. This time, he can't seem to find any at all. Maybe the long, cold winter decimated them. But then, he finds a feather. Where's the rest of the bird? Not far away, as it happens. It's feeding quite happily. The rhea is a species that thrives extremely well in our cultivated countrysides. We have lots of canola and grains planted all over and lots of pasture land. That's advantageous to this species. Canola in particular helps the rhea survive the winter. For the bird, it's an ideal food source. Much to the dismay of canola grower Hans Friedrich Gruber. The birds are eating up more and more of his crops every year and he's powerless to stop them. Everywhere he looks, the leaves are bitten down to the stalk. A third of my crops is canola. And if I lose it, I lose a third of my revenue. Think about what that means. It's enough to finish me off. I'd go broke. I'd go bankrupt. Simple as that. I couldn't absorb it. I just couldn't manage with revenue down a third. Germany's Environment Ministry is aware of Hans Friedrich Gruber's plight. They say it's a sad but isolated case and nothing can be done because the rhea is protected by the Washington Convention on Endangered Species. That means we're not allowed to hunt, interfere with, chase or kill the rhea, nor can we interfere with its habitat. So the rhea is free to enjoy mecklenburg vorpommerns full hospitality. But do the giant flightless birds pose any kind of threat? At Berlin's Technical University, Ingo Kovarat has been looking into the impact non-native species can have. When an invasive species is introduced, humans usually have something to do with it. The American crayfish is one example. They were introduced after the European crayfish had declined because of water pollution. And now the American crayfish is turning out to be a problem because it's brought in a fungus infection that's causing a massive decrease in the native crayfish. That's a direct result of this fungus infection and the consequences could be devastating. That begs the question, did the rhea bring in any diseases? For now, the bird's under observation. Conservationist Martin Bauer says the only real hazard the rhea presents is when they try to cross roads and highways. Other invasive species pose much greater threats. These things are the consequence of the global trade relations of vegetables and flowers coming from Spain and the roundback slug coming along with them. The same goes for pests like moths. They come in with certain kinds of fruit and take hold here, partly in the greenhouses and nurseries. They can cause massive damage to crops. So far, Hans Friedrich Gruber has found little support for his problems with the rears. It's just gone. But that's the way things are. He has little hope that nature will eventually take care of the problem. For now, they're completely safe because they have no natural enemies. The only one they might have is the eagle, which picks up a chick now and then. But that's not much. 
Rear expert Frank Philip can't give the farmer any encouragement either. This year's long winter has had no effect on the bird. Breeding season has begun and they're busy laying eggs. Compared to spring last year, the population has greatly increased. We have hard evidence of that and the trend is set to continue exponentially in the long term. And how many birds will there be in, say, 10 years? In 10 years, we could easily reach 500 or maybe even 1,000 birds if the weather conditions are right.